Welcome to the Flat Track Factory. Today's video we're going to talk about body position. I'll give you four reasons why it's important. I'll talk about what the body position is and how to get it if you don't have it yet or to make it better if you're close. Stick around. Reason number one. It's dangerous. Sitting in the wrong place on the motorcycle at the wrong time causes instability and lack of confidence leads to crashes. Number two, it's uncomfortable even though it feels like it's more comfortable. Number three, it tires you out even though it seems like sitting in the right spot is more tiring. And Number four, the golden reason why you're probably here is it's slow. And uh, the lap times are really all that matters. So let's, let's talk about that. But I want to interrupt and take care of the caveats and the yeah, but what about this guy or this girl? Uh, to keep this video less than a week long, I'm going to talk about some generalities. There's going to be uh, people who could rightly, myself included, say this video doesn't cover it thoroughly enough. Correct. <laughs> but I want to give you a digestible amount of information with an actionable strategy to fix it that you can actually measure. So that's going to limit us down to uh, some, maybe, maybe an initial set of topics. Also, this medium uh, video, there's only so much I can do with, uh, with, with the video. So uh, part of this is going to be an ongoing thing that you're going to have, you're going to have to do some homework on this. Could somebody ride incorrectly and go very fast? Yes. And anybody with an internet connection could find many of them. I've been talking to somebody, a couple of people have been encouraging me to do this video. And we had a conversation about uh, a, a rider, a very recent rider, very talented rider, really nice guy. He rides, he rides a little funny, and he's extremely fast. Uh, so yes, there are exceptions, and yeah, but what about this racer? For sure, not what we're talking about. Back to my first reason, it's dangerous. Why is it dangerous? The motorcycle needs inputs from us. We are a large portion of the racing machine's weight, and our ballast is movable. So if you take the percentage of the rider in their gear on the racing motorcycle, it's huge. A race car engineer would kill to be able to move this percentage of weight, or really any weight at all, around. So we need to present to the tires, to the contact patches, remember we're riding on two little spots like that, Everything else is kind of secondary. We're just going to wait those things. We've got to wait it the right way. We've got to be in a position to react. So not only is it a, um, is it a weight issue, it's also the ability to react. Can you maybe be a little bit in the wrong place at one time? Yes, you can. Because what's going to happen right after that, you're going to need to be way over here. And it takes time to get from the right spot to the, to the next right spot. So this is a dynamic sport and I'm going to try to break this down and uh, make it uh, maybe a little too simplified. So this is, this is why we need to be in the right spot. The, the bike rider combination needs our support and uh, it's not going to do what we want it to do if we're not in the right place. All right, point number two is it's actually more comfortable to sit in a neutral aggressive athletic position. Uh, maybe better words to describe that, but what I'm talking about is uh, sitting a little bit more forward on the bike, not the cruiser crotch where you're s sitting back with your knees spread and uh, kind of slouched with elbows down, right? I mean, that's, that's a more comfortable if you're sitting uh, on the motorcycle in the pits or maybe in your lounge chair or in staging, right? But uh, this is an athletic env endeavor and we're going to need to be in a neutral position so we can easily get to the next position. So we're just going to call it uh, in totality for the total lap, for the total main event, it's going to be more comfortable to start kind of in a home position. And uh, we'll talk about what that is. Point number two and point number three are almost the same thing, but a little bit different. It conserves energy to be in a more aggressive position on the motorcycle. How is this possible? Well, bear with me. 
we're going to talk about the totality, the totality of the lap or the eight laps or 10 laps or 20 laps or whatever you're racing is being in the correct position will conserve energy and allow you to do the next thing that you want to do or you need to do to do that good lap time. And a prime example of this is people who you see that are dangling their foot for an entire straightaway, an entire lap, sometimes an entire race. That's exhausting. One of the reasons that this often happens, if you really quiz these people, is they can't get their foot up because they're uncomfortable. The bike's not settled, they don't know what it's gonna do. And very often, this goes back to going back down around the track. So if they're uncomfortable over here, down the back straight with their foot's dangling, that probably started over here, going into one, where they were uncomfortably in the wrong spot to make the motorcycle do what it needed to do. And it just, it, this was caused by that, caused by that, caused by that. And what you see going into three actually started half a lap before going into one. So this is, this is why uh, being uncomfortable on, a, on the motorcycle, uh, dangling your foot, could easily start by having your crotch too far back. So we're gonna need to be in the right spot to conserve energy in the entire lap. Point number four, and this is probably the easiest one to sell, is I'm going to try to convince you uh, that it's slower to, to be in the wrong spot. In totality, for the entire lap, you're going to need to put it all together. So uh, this is probably why you're here, and that's what I'm trying to help you out with. If you're still around, let me tell you what I think about the right place to be on the motorcycle. I'll probably just put up some, some pictures. Not, not maybe the best pictures. Uh, this is actually going to be your job. You found yourself to the internet and we have a massive library of uh, racers, uh, all different sizes and shapes and eras, riding different tracks and that sort of thing. And you're gonna need to now go find that and create a cal catalog of what what the uh, the possibilities you know again not the far outliers uh, what what the the fast racers uh, over time have been able to do and uh, that is what you're going to catalog as correct that said generally speaking we want to be forward on the motorcycle to wait the front tire to turn the motorcycle the motorcycle needs to have you in the right spot to do front end activities. And we all think of flat track racing and everybody loves to get that rear tire out. That's, that's, that's the, the holy grail of, of flat track motorcycle racing. And uh, really that's a front end activity. The a big portion of the motorcycle racing lap time in flat track comes from what you do on the front tire. And we need to be forward on the bike, kind of an upright torso with our, our head held up, kind of looking into the, to the corner with our outside elbow up and our right arm extended, pushing the bike down a little bit. And then you'll see people open their hips up on the motorcycle where their, their hips are actually pointed around the racetrack to the left. You're no longer hips in line with the motorcycle. This will give you uh, room to get the bike uh, uh, pushed down underneath you and uh, with your left leg out of the way. And uh, where the left leg goes, there's a pretty big variance on that. And some people kind of like to open up their hips more than others. And you are going to, in your homework assignment, you're going to find all that. I'm not sure there's any solid evidence that one way is better than the other, but uh, you need to be comfortable on the motorcycle and you need to be in the right place to put the weight on the chassis in the right spot in the right lap time. So uh, that's uh, generally speaking. Now, when we go to the gas, we are going to kind of unwind that, right? We're going to have our body and our foot connected to the, the throttle. Off the gas, we're going to be, again, forward like I just described. We're going to go to the gas and we're going to need to get weight to the back and our foot needs to come up and back. So they're going to be kind of connected, right? So your homework assignment, you're going to, you're going to watch for that. 
those crazy things happen and you'll see guys do some and girls do some unusual things again yes those are the caveats those are the exceptions we're going to try to look for um, the basics i can hear you saying great dude stop talking and tell me how i'm going to change the way i ride <laughs> that's the secret isn't it? isn't it all right if i haven't put you to sleep or got you to click off you probably are here to find out yeah so how am i going to change my riding and I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a difficult challenge for you. Racing is difficult. Uh, you, you already probably know that. So this is going to be sort of like those other things. I've thought about this for a long time. They have schools that teach this. And, you know, I've taken them. I've taught at them. And they, they have some value. However, um, there's just not much that you can change in a day-long school or even a three-day-long school. Uh, there's... This needs to, to become part of you. And uh, all the research that I've ever read, mastery of uh, physical activity takes thousands and thousands and thousands of proper repetitions. So um, yeah, schools, okay, but you're, you're really gonna need to, to do this on your own. So how can you do that? Well, you're gonna get a buddy with their smartphone and they're going to video you and you're gonna watch it. Remember the homework you did when you were online looking at, uh, at video clips and, and pictures of the real fast racers and their body positions based on what we talked about, about where you should be and why? Well, now you're going to watch yourself and you're going to compare it. And you're going to keep that video and then you're going to practice. Because without the video, if I just tell you or somebody at the school just tells you what you should do, you're going to make a change and it's not going to be a change or it's not going to be much of a change or you're going to get tired and go back to what you did before you tried to change. So we need to document it in some way, some way. and that's my recommendation. If you have a uh, friend who is uh, a very astute uh, racer and has uh, a, good, a, a, a good rapport with you to describe, you know, unbiasedly as to what you're really doing that that will help but a picture's worth a thousand words and a video is you know even even more so so that that's my recommendation for you film it and watch it and compare it over time and then you're going to practice again this is going to take a long time and this ties back into uh, another video that i suggested about a year ago that people watch it's on my channel it's called uh xr 100s and it will explain to you how you can do this more cheaply with less consequences in a smaller split space that can be less noticeable. That way you can do it easier. So there you go. Hang on one second. If you're still watching this, do me a favor. You know 80% of you that watch these videos aren't subscribed? I think the point of this channel is to get more people to the racetrack to race to overcome some of the barriers, the intimidation, that I don't know where to start thing. So we need to get these videos, or maybe not my videos, somebody's videos, out to more people. And the way it works on the back end is people need to like the video or even dislike the video, comment on the video, and share it on social media to get it out there. So um, that's my favorite ask for you, is to kind of grow the sport, give back a little bit, and uh, Thanks for watching.